Number seven. A gyroscope slows from an initial rate of 32 radians per second at a rate of 0.7 radians per second squared. How long does it take to come to rest? All right. Um, so I wrote down what we know over here. All right. They're also telling us or uh, asking us how long, right? So we have to find the time. And we also know that the final velocity, angular velocity that is, is also zero because we want to find out how long it takes to come to rest. So it starts at 32 radians per second. It's going to decelerate, okay, uh, at 0.7 radians per second squared. So there should be a little minus sign there. We want to find the time, and we also know that the final angular velocity is zero. Just think about your, your linear kinematic analogs. This is like initial velocity. This is your acceleration. You're trying to find time, and this is your final velocity. What equation of kinematics do you know relates these three, excuse me, four variables? Well, the one I know is that the final velocity is equal to the initial velocity plus the acceleration times time. Now, this equation is the linear analog to the rotational one. So basically, just substitute on in the angular analog. So this is going to be angular velocity. The final angular velocity is equal to the initial angular velocity plus the angular acceleration multiplied by time. So this is the formula we need. Okay, easy, easy, easy. So now we are asked to solve for time. So just solve this thing for time. So it looks like we're going to have final angular velocity minus the initial all over the angular acceleration. Just now plug in the values. So we have 0 minus 32 all over then a negative 0 0.7. And if you notice the signs work out nicely, the time will be positive. It has to be. So 32 divided by 0.7, that's basically what it comes out to. So in terms of sig figs, I'm going to use three. So we got 45.7. So 45.7 seconds. Okay, that's how long it takes to come to rest, given the information. So that is letter uh, A. Let's take a look at letter B. So how many revolutions does it make before stopping? Remember, revolutions in terms of your angular uh, variables, it's going to correlate with theta. Now, theta, remember, is in rate, oops, is in radians. I know I was going to say radians, but I was writing revolutions. Theta is in radians. But you know that if you can find radians, you can always find revolutions. Right? You basically have to think of them as synonyms to one another when you're problem solving. So if I can find the radians, I just divide it by 2 pi. And that tells me how many revolutions there are because for every one revolution, there are 2 pi radians. So now, in terms of the linear analog to theta, Theta is like asking to calculate the distance, okay? So, and I've approached this on several problems prior. Um, so this hopefully, hopefully this concept should be very similar, uh, familiar at this point. Now, uh, for letter B, we're asked to find the distance and we're given a bunch of uh, information. I'm sure there's more than one way uh, to calculate this. Um, what I would like to do is I would like to, though, um, try to use information that's given in the problem, not something I calculated, uh, because maybe I made a mistake here and I don't want the error to propagate into my next part. So I'm thinking to myself, all right, well, I'm being asked to find a distance. They told me the initial velocity. They also told me the acceleration. And I also know the final velocity. So what equation of linear kinematics relates those four variables together? And I come up with this one, right? The final velocity squared is equal to the initial initial velocity squared plus two times the acceleration multiplied by the distance. So now basically, it's the same equation now for uh, angular kinematics or rotational kinematics. So substitute the velocities for the angular analog. So this is omega f squared is equal to omega i squared plus two times alpha times theta. We want to find theta, so just solve this bad boy for theta. So theta is going to be equal to final uh, angular velocity squared minus the initial squared, all divided by two times your alpha. Two times your alpha. Plug in the values now, so this is basically the equation, right? Plug in your values, now the final is zero. The initial was 32, and that's squared. Divide this now by two times your angular acceleration, which was negative, and just now plug it all into the calculator, right? So now here we go. So there's going to be 32 squared divided by 2 times 0.7. Comes out to be a positive answer. 
Uh, so this is going to be 731 or so. 731, rounding a little bit. And that'll be uh, radians. Remember, we talked about, though, we're going to find the answer in radians. Now we just have to convert it back to revolutions. Okay? Simply take this value, divide it by 2 pi. right? Because there are 2 pi radians in one revolution. So I'm not going to go through the whole dimensional analysis setup that hopefully should be good at this point. We're just going to divide it then by 2 pi. And we get a value of about 116. Right? It looks like 3 sig fig, so 116 should be good. 116 revolutions. And that is the final answer for B. Guys, thanks for tuning in. Please remember to hit that subscribe button. Tell your friends. We don't mind. Have a great day.